Hero Complex by Tiger Miney. Read by Alamex Mabella. Chapter 2. My apologies to John Le Carre. Miney, I love you. You know I do. But there's a very good reason why I work with animals. Charlie was sitting at Hermione's desk at the menagerie, looking over Hermione's fundraising proposal. Charlie, it's really easy. All you need to do is fluke call all the witches and the wizards on the list and get them to agree to either come to the fundraiser or at least leave a donation. Hermione was checking her reflection in the mirror. Her hair was pulled back in a severe bun, and she was dressed in a black pantsuit with an emerald green silk blouse. Charlie wanted to mention how much she looked like Professor McGonagall, but chose instead to complain about his role in the fundraiser. But why can't you do it? She gathered up her file and handbag. I have some errands to see to. As Hermione turned towards the door, a familiar meow echoed from the kitchen. Charlie, please keep an eye on that cat. I'll be back later to take him home. Make sure he doesn't cause a ruckus or hurt his luck, father. The only ruckus will be me trying to flu people. How about I see to the errands and you flew these people? Oh, come on, Charlie. To them, you're a celebrity. The Charlie Weasley who wrestles with dragons. You'll have them buying out tables and becoming patrons in no time. Before Charlie could raise another excuse, Hermione ran out the door. When Hermione arrived at Harry's office in the aura department of the ministry, he looked like he'd been sucking on a lemon. Performance appraisals? Hermione dropped her back into the empty seat in front of Harry's desk and then perched on the edge, moving his greatest dead ever mark filled with ballpoint pens. Budget, muttered Harry, not looking up from the calculator he had smuggled in years ago to help him with the department budgets. Hermione tilted her head. But budgets aren't due until February, she said, leaning further over the desk to see what his figure looked like. It's only November. Yes, well, Harry leaned back, running both his hands through his hair and not doing anything to help control the chaos it had to send it into. Some little upstart upstairs has mentioned to the minister that the aura department does not make a profit and should therefore not be entitled to a jewel bonus. Hermione blinked in surprise. That's... She wanted to say ridiculous. She wanted to say that ours worked really hard and deserved a jewel bonus. She wanted to say that the point of the ministry wasn't to make profit, but to look after the wizarding community. Bingley is what she said instead. Bless you, said Harry absentmindedly, looking at the parchment on his desk. Do you think if I reduce our quill requests, I can squeeze out enough for the unspeakables? A post on the wall behind Harry caught her eye. Now for his missing. This caught Harry's attention and he sat up. Yeah, about three weeks now. How didn't I know about this? I thought it would be all over the profit. His mother wanted it to keep out of the public eye. Hermione rolled her eyes. He's probably on a bender in Ibiza with Blaze. A three-week bender. Come on, Hermione. I know you too. He made a vague rolling motion with his wrist, which could mean anything, really. But I doubt that Draco would be able to maintain a bender for three weeks. Maybe a week, at most. Everyone is really worried. She noticed how Harry almost sank in on himself. He's not a bender, is he? Because he was on an assignment for you. Her eyes widened as she talked through her realization. You made him an unspeakable. You think he's dead? At this point, her money was certain that Harry would sink under his desk and curl up into a ball. He looked green with guilt. It wasn't supposed to go this badly. He was just making use of his access and he hasn't reported back to me in a while. I can't believe you actually hired Drake and Malfoy to do a job for you. You of all people know how utterly unreliable he is. And to make him a spy. Of all things, Harry, I knew getting you that Jack Ryan box set was a mistake. That's not fair, Hermione. He was the best person for the job, just because he... He bit off his words at the look that she threw him and swallowed hard. Why are you here? I thought you were busy at the menagerie. I need to see some files. Her eyes flicked towards the ceiling pointedly. You know I can't access those files. I wouldn't ask you unless it was life or death. Harry glanced around his office and crossed his arms on his desk. I understand your menagerie is important, Hermione. Let me buy you a cuppa and you can tell me how I can help. Harry led Hermione through the leaky cauldron out into Muggle London. 
He made him catch three different cabs, two buses and a detour from King's Cross to Canary Wharf, up to Camden, across the Spitalfields, before ending up in a coffee shop in Primrose Hill. Quite the scenic route, Hermione commented after she'd ordered the biggest black coffee they had on offer. Harry settled for a cup of tea and a slice of chocolate cake. My office has ears, but so do I. There are whispers about someone trying to change the ministry. Bingley, Hermione nodded. That's the name that seems to be giving me grief too. I just wanted to do some research on how to eradicate this particular strain of pest. Unfortunately, this pest is a spider and her web is thickest upstairs. Keeping her secrets closest to her, Hermione sipped her coffee and stared in amazement at Harry's ability to finish a slice of cake in three bites. It was sad that the abused boy under the stairs came out whenever there were treats around. How well do you know the spider? Harry shrugged. She tends to send minions with messages, never gives direct orders to me, keeps her hands clean and can claim plausible deniability should feathers get ruffled. She said she was cleaning up my mess. Sort of. When you were there, things ran as well as could be expected. You actually care about people. She wants power. Why is it that every ten years there has to be some kind of megalomaniac that comes out of the woodwork? Is it the moon, alignment of the stars? What else do you know about her? Nothing. We were really looking into her, but we can't find a thing other than what she wants us to find. Why would the Auras look into her in the first place? She targeted the Department of Magical Creatures. That makes her a bully. Harry didn't need to say he didn't like bullies. Everyone knew that. Hermione nodded at his statement before taking a sip of a drink. Harry sighed and leaned forward. Look, I'm not going to tell you to stop looking, but I need you to be careful. With Malfoy missing, we need to assume the worst, and I don't want to add your picture to my wall. You really think he's dead? She swallowed around a lump in her throat. He leaned back, curling in on himself. We haven't found a body, but the odds are not in his favor. Do you know where he kept his notes? Harry shook his head. Not in his desk, and we can't go into the manor. Sorry, Marnie. I wish I could give you more. That's okay, Harry. I promise I'll be careful. When I left the coffee shop, it was in opposite directions and at different times. Hermione would never admit it to anyone, but she was actually enjoying her turn at playing spy. The cat lapped onto the table as soon as they exited the flue. Hermione shrugged it off and went to change into something more comfortable. When she returned to the living room, it was staring at the newspaper cuttings she'd left there the night before. One would think you were actually reading those. She mused as she went to turn on the kettle. They cat me out softly, its puff resting on an article. What have you got there? Hermione gently pried it from the cat and pulled it closer. The cat shook its head, trying to dislodge the cone she transfigured from a coaster from around its neck. Stop that! It says stop you from licking yourself. She swore the look it gave her was the feline equivalent of a dead pen. The article only had the briefest mention of Bingley. Instead, it spoke of the death of renowned wizarding philanthropist Archibald Wigglebush. Hermione was not proud of herself for giggling at his name, but deep down, weren't they all 13 year old boys? Wigglebush had been found dead in his study, which had been locked from the inside. The healers had ruled it an aneurysm brought on by a snuff habit. Hermione didn't know much about snuff, only that it was the ash of various herbs mixed together. Usually it contained fennel and willow bark, but unless a snuff was laced with belladonna or maybe a muggle drug, it shouldn't trigger an aneurysm. Bingley was mentioned as one of the relatives who was mourning the loss of her favorite uncle. Which struck Hermione as odd, as Wigglebush was as far ideologically from Bingsley as one could get. Maybe this was it. A murder in a locked room. Oh goody. Thank you for listening to today's chapter of Hero Complex by Tiger Miney. If you would like to stay up to date on upcoming chapters and stories, you can follow me on AO3, YouTube, Spotify, Instagram or Tumblr. Thank you all for listening.